Well, after Florida lost that game Monday night against Auburn, Ken, a lot of people were discounting them, counting them out. They bounced back in a big way last night. Real big. And the big thing about it was that they beat a good team. They blew out Mississippi. They are a good team. They had just beaten Vandy on Monday night. So I guess it was better for them to blow out somebody really good. Rather a lot than of help from the bench. People like Clifford Lett. They're just so deep. That's one thing that's going to help them. If they're going to win the SEC, it's going to be because they got such a deep bench. Well, the Florida Gators really needed a bounce back, as we said, after that loss Monday night to Auburn that momentarily derailed their conference title train. And bounced back they did with a rout of the Ole Miss Rebels in the O'Connell Center. You want to know how many real basketball fans there are around here? 9,115. That's the number that showed up while the rest of the front runners stayed home, giving up after that one loss. Those that were there saw that Rebels keep things close early. Eric Smith had 20 as Ole Miss trailed by just eight at the half. But once again, it was the M&M boys. Vernon Maxwell had 16. Andrew Moten added 12. And Clifford Lett came off the bench to have his second best scoring night as a Gator, 12 points. And get this, Dwayne Shinsis had 10 rebounds. The big guy really asserting himself on the boards after getting down on himself just a little bit after his play in recent days. They weren't really boxing me out, so, you know, I kind of, you know, I haven't been doing nothing in the past game, so I just went to the boards real strong, and, you know, that kind of got us a lot of easy buckets. You know? Now, with the Gators' win, they pulled back to within a half game of the Alabama Crimson Tide in the conference standings, and to a man, the Gators think this one's going right down to the wire. I hope so. Coach Sloan wasn't too optimistic about the conference race after the loss at Auburn, but I think a lot of the players still feel that we have a shot. You know, we're not even close to mathematically out of the race yet, and we're just going to keep playing hard and let, uh, let things fall into place if they will. Uh, yeah, I hope it does, you know. We don't want to lose anymore. They can lose somewhere. It doesn't matter. We're going to this year. We're going to be ready to play. The Gators finish up the season at Alabama on the 28th. Hey, how about North Carolina's Dean Smith? The coach got his 600th career win last night as the Tar Heels beat Wake Forest 94-85. Take a day at a time in my life and always have, but you can bet there's one person who's not thinking of any coaching records. I, I go on this year's team as the only thing that enters me at this point. The Heels currently the number three team in the nation at 21 and 2. By now you probably know the story of how the Florida Gators landed the best high school football player in the land, one Emmett Smith from Pensacola, Scambia High. Seems he put the names of the schools he was considering in a hat and kept drawing till he drew 10 times. The thing is, Florida didn't win that draw, but then Emma just decided who cares what the hat says and picked the Gators anyway. Oh, That's what you How about him wearing red and white to the signing? See, red and white are the colors of the brass. Well, seven points take the average I knew, I knew if I made my decision up to go to the floor, y'all were gonna expect, some, expect me to come in orange and blue. See, I fooled you, though. <laughs> See, I wrote, wore red and white tonight. Just, today, just throw everybody off, try to keep them off balance. Let's take a look now at some other recruits the Gators have signed since yesterday. Dexter Austin, a speedy wideout out of Sarasota Cardinal Mooney High. Lloyd Hopkins, the best junior college running back in the country from Arizona Western Junior College. His teammate, Kelvin Calhoun, tight end from Arizona Western. And Terrence Barber, wide out from Auburndale. Now the thing about Barber is that he verbally committed to Florida State, but then he called up Florida and asked if he could have a scholarship to play for the Gators, which is kind of like Vanna White calling you up and asking if you're available tomorrow night. I mean, what are you going to say, right? Now the Gators may sign one or two more players to scholarships or pick up a couple more walk-ons. We'll let you know when we have those. Meanwhile, the hockey world is still abuzz about last night's thrilling win by the NHL All-Stars over the Soviet national team in the first of the two games set known as Rendezvous 87. There was a packed house on hand at the Colisee in Quebec, and they saw the best player in hockey, Wayne Gretzky. He got the NHL Stars off to a lead with uh, an assist to teammate Yari Curry. Curry got the goal. NHL led 1-0 after one. They scored again in the second. They were tied 3-3 until a minute 15 to go. Things uh, started for the NHL Stars. They were up by one. Wilt and Pele looking on at Colisee in Quebec. They scored again in the second period. Euler Glenn Anderson wraps one around the Soviet goal. It was 2-0, but the Soviets cut it to 2-1 when Alexei Kastanov scores past Grant Fuhrer. That's the way it stood. 2-1 NHL going into the final 20 minutes. And the guys in red tie it up when Viachi's Baikov weaves in and around Boston's Ray Bork, gets it under Fuhrer to make it 2-2. But the NHL came back again, taking the lead at 3-2 with this Kevin Deneen goal set up by Dave Poland. Again, the Soviets get the lead. Anatoly Semenov gets the goal and takes the post with him. It's 3-3, and we're looking at overtime. That one hurt, but with just a minute 15 to play, Mario Lemieux skates in, and Poulin deflects it just enough to get it up and over the stick of the Soviet goalie. 4-3, the final. Team NHL takes game one around rendezvous 87. They'll play game two tomorrow night, also in Quebec City. And talking about hockey, you want to see a hockey brawl. This is not just a fight, folks. This is war. This was a game last night uh, between St. Cloud and the University of Wisconsin up in Minnesota. Delayed the start of that game by an hour and a half. 
And if you see, it's, when you get in a hockey fight, you just grab the guy nearest to you, and That's you can't get hurt. And quickly, congratulations going out to Janet Wendell of Gainesville, who won the Empire State Run-Up today in New York City, ran 1,575 steps up to the top. She couldn't get the elevator, huh? No. Thanks a lot, Ken. We'll be right back. Stay with us.